Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about some upcoming severe weather threats. We're just going to be taking a look at individual dates and just taking a look at what the temperatures look like that day, or what the storminess looks like that day, and also what the cape looks like that day. And just pinpointing some dates we might have some severe weather going on. <music> For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we have any major severe weather outbreaks that will happen this summer or fall? Or do you think that for the most part, most of our bigger severe weather threats are all said and done? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Real quickly, I'd like to mention also I made a Patreon post talking about a potential upcoming cooldown. I know we're only just getting started with this big warm-up, but there's already a cooldown that could be on the way. We made a Patreon post about that. You can join it today and figure out when... Uh, we think that cooldown could be occurring potentially. So check it out. That's going to be in the pinned comment down below and also uh, the description as well. Let's get straight into things. And first things first, we're taking a look at the European model's uh, cape. And as you can see, this is for today. And we have anywhere from about 1,000 to some areas reaching about 2,000 there in the southeast in the south central United States. Nothing crazy. We will have a marginal risk around, possibly a slight risk. Uh, but nothing crazy. There is some storminess, as you can see, for the south central United States and the southeastern United States. Also, some snow for the mountainous regions of Washington in the month of June. Very interesting. By the time we're reaching Sunday, and that's going to be June 6th, you can see that we get a little bit of an uptick there in the Cape. We're seeing those yellows and reds come in, which is about 2,000 to 3,000 Cape amounts. Uh, but as you look at the storminess, it's just not going to be sufficient for any sort of massive severe weather outbreak due to this large amount of cape. Uh, the storminess just is not going to cooperate with the cape, and that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you have a large amount of cape, uh, but you really just don't have uh, that precipitation or that storm mode to really trigger a severe weather event. Now, as we take a look here at about Monday, and that's going to be June 7th, you can see a massive uptick once again in our cape. Now we have those reds and purples and whites showing up. That is anywhere from about 3,000 to 5,000 uh, there in those purples and whites and reds. Uh, so that is obviously a very, very large amount of cape that is now showing up, according to this model, in the south central United States. That is like five times more than you need for severe weather, typically. There will be some storminess that is close, as you can see on Monday, but just not really there. It's not really where all that cape is, and it's just another, uh, it's just another example of just not really lining up uh, at all. So I, I don't think we're going to have any sort of major severe weather that is a result of that either. Now, as we move into the long range, and that's what we're going to do, we're going to move more towards Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and just keep on going. I think we could get some severe weather threats potentially moving forward. Now, here we are taking a look at Tuesday, and this is the Cape on Tuesday. And as you can see, we're taking a look. This is June 8th. And there is oranges and reds and purples going on everywhere. I'm not going to be surprised if we have some marginal risks in some spots at least uh, during this event because there's basically 1,000 plus cape everywhere east of the Rockies at this point. I mean, it, it's, it's wild. Uh, this is a ton of cape in a very large area. And as you can see, it's going to be stormy on Tuesday. Rain pretty much everywhere. This model is probably just picking up on thunderstorms everywhere. Um, and, and they're just being basically triggered... Uh, by all of this cape that is in the area. Uh, and by the time we reach Wednesday, it's it's not really going to change too much either. We're going to have a lot of it around for Wednesday as well. As you can see, that's June 9th. We have the reds, the oranges, the purples everywhere. It's all over the place. The plains, the Gulf states, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, the Southeast. Pretty much everywhere has at least uh, 500 or 1,000 cape. Very, very active day. Again, just for not, not really severe weather activity. We, that's kind of a question mark at this point. But at least thunderstorm activity seems to be a high likelihood on both Tuesday and Wednesday. Based on really just the way everything is looking with the Cape. Uh, and then also just the precipitation that this Euro model is putting out. I mean, it looks like it's going to be widespread, isolated, or scattered thunderstorms all over the place. Classic summer day. Uh, it's probably going to be hot as well. But then... We're going to have these isolated thunderstorms showing up. I love days like that. It's not necessarily dangerous thunderstorms, but it's so hot and these thunderstorms pop up uh, and they're always so beautiful to see because it's not cloudy, it's sunny, so you can see the side of them. I, let me know if you have any experiences like that that you just remember. I, I can think of quite a few uh, occasions where I've seen the most beautiful thunderstorms on hot, sunny days where they just 
it's so humid and so hot they can't help but develop. It's it's a beautiful thing, really. We call those popcorn thunderstorms. Uh, that's kind of like a old term on some old Facebook groups that I used to be a part of. That's what we would call them, popcorn thunderstorms, because on the radar, they're kind of just all over the place, little tiny popcorn pieces. Uh, so, yeah, maybe that's a saying we should start using on the channel, popcorn thunderstorm. I love it. I love it. I love it, guys. Brings back a lot of good memories for me uh, in some of those old Facebook groups. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to go ahead and move on towards Thursday and then even beyond in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at about Thursday, and as you can see, it's another case of just 1,000 plus Cape being pretty much widespread, especially the further south you go. Uh, the plains here by this point, just tons and tons of Cape. We have the reds, the purples, the whites, even the blacks here showing up. I see a maximum of 5,444 in here, uh, probably in western Oklahoma there, as you can see. Not the panhandle, but the, you know, the main large area there. Uh, still, just a huge amount of cape, but look at that. No thunderstorms again. So, just another case of it just really not lining up at all. Uh, and that's been the trend, as you've seen. Really, just not a lot of lining up as far as those thunderstorms in the high cape goes. Uh, would I be surprised if we do see something line up eventually? Not really, you know, like it's, we have the cape around, the very high amounts of cape. So if thunderstorms can just get their act together within those areas, we could see uh, some very significant thunderstorms and possibly severe weather activity as well. But this is just another date where there'll likely be scattered and isolated thunderstorms all over the place in the eastern half of the country, Thursday, June 10th. I think that's what a lot of next week is going to be dictated by. A lot of people are going to be seeing a lot of thunderstorms. It's going to be very hot. Uh, and there's just going to be enough cape for thunderstorms pretty much anywhere in the eastern half of the country. Now, by the time we reach Tuesday, June 15th, we just took a massive jump. You can see the cape pretty much exits out by this point, uh, June 15th. You can see there's almost none there for the northern portions of the eastern United States. Why is that happening? And you can see there's no precipitation either. Uh, we do see some precipitation kind of along the Gulf Coast and the East Coast. But outside of that, we don't really see much precipitation anywhere really well here's the reason why on tuesday june 15th this model has a massive cool down heading into the eastern half of the country i i touch more on this on the patreon page if you want to check that out like i said uh just the fact that we're going to have a cool down here in the eastern half of the country potentially towards the middle portion of the month this is very far out take it with a massive grain of salt because really uh it, things can change in a hurry i've, I've always emphasized that uh, but for now, it looks like there could be a cooldown at some point during the, f the midway point of the month. And that's not too uncommon. You know, it's really rare to see a heat wave or a very warm pattern last all the way through a month. So we are expecting there will be some cooldowns at some point. Uh, so I'm not super surprised by this whatsoever. Uh, now let's go ahead and move this. And this is just the pattern before. So I'm comparing that to June 11th. That was June 15th, like I said, and now June 11th. And this is just the pure opposite. So as you can see, we were in a very warm pattern uh, by Friday, June 11th, and that's going to last all the way from today, Saturday, June 5th, through the 11th at least, and probably way closer to the 15th as well, you know, 12th, 13th, 14th as well, being very, very warm in the eastern United States. But eventually that breaks away towards a colder pattern in the eastern United States. But before that, it's going to be very, very hot. And here's the overall 10 days, the next 10 days. So June 5th through 15th, and as you can see, overall, if you're outside of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, or Mississippi, then you're pretty much going to be in a very warm pattern for the first half of this month, or at least the next 10 days, the 5th through the 15th. Especially if you go towards the north central United States or the Great Lakes, you're definitely looking at about uh, temperatures anywhere from about 8 to 14 degrees above average here on a 10-day period. It's going to be basically a heat wave for those regions, so look out. It's going to be very hot over the next 10 days. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. We've talked about some longer range things today, and that's why we're limited on our confidence as of today. Anyway, in yesterday's video, I asked you guys, when do you think our next severe weather event will be? And James Marr said, I believe the next severe weather event will be sometime early next week. And I think that is a possibility, again, based on all of that cape we have in the area. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lair the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary's, John Qualisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal. 
If you would like to be part of this exciting patron entry today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our two channel members, uh, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. If you'd like to join this, that'll be next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. It helps that YouTube algorithm out so much. And be sure to leave a comment down below as well. That also helps. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.